Hello, I'm Karen Buck, and welcome to Wedding 411 On Demand Podcast. Today, we're with Robin Summer of Images of Summer and Bill Redberg from Positive Images by Redberg. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. Karen. You know, choosing a photographer, obviously, is a decision of a lifetime. This is the aspect of the wedding that's going to last for generations. Tell me what goes into the decision of choosing the photographer. The main decision is made by the brides and grooms now, as opposed to parents from years past. Mm -hmm. They are the decision makers. That's who we key on. It's their day. They're very adamant on what they want. They generally know when we go in and we just respond to their requests. Okay. Engagement sessions. We all know how that has really grown in the past mm -hmm. few years. Yep. They certainly use photos from that for the save the dates. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your experience with engagement sessions. Engagement sessions can be so much fun. We can either do the engagement session at a favorite location, or sometimes we even do them at the, at the place that the um, proposal was made, which is a lot of fun. They are a great way for us to get to know our client and for our clients to get to know us. And sometimes those guys have a little bit of trouble warming up to the whole photography thing. It's definitely a way to relax the groom so he knows the photographer is his friend as opposed to a necessary evil. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Plus, you get to learn the good side. Absolutely. and any little quirks or nuances. That's all good. So let's take the wedding day and dissect it, okay? Tell us a little bit about how the wedding day works. We're going to start with going into the, the bride suite in advance of the wedding. Well, this is something that a, a female photographer can, can do. It's a great mm -hmm. advantage to being a woman to, and being able to step into that situation because a, a male's not always, it's, it's not the male's domain often. Um, either I'm stepping into co controlled chaos or right. sometimes it's actually nice and calm. Beautiful shots. Details, I would think. Detail shots mm -hmm. are excellent. Mm -hmm. The guys. What happens when you go into where the guys are? The guys are very simple. Usually in their boxer shorts, drinking out of flask, and wanting to get to the reception. <laughs> that probably wraps That's it up. That's it. <laughs> so um, big at this time are the first reveal, the first look, the reveal. How does that play into what you're doing? It's very important now because many couples want to do all their formals ahead of time to be able to enjoy the rest of their day. So we have the groom with his back to the bride. She comes in, taps him on the shoulder. They have a very emotional beginning. They go off to the side. We let them have a few minutes by themselves. They come back to start the rest of the photographs, and we're done before the ceremony starts. Is this where loose, I've heard the term loose formals come in, and how? what does that mean, and how does it work? Well, we, we uh, love that term, loose formals, um, because although we... Um, Photograph people uh, sometimes it, with posing. Um, older grandparents and things will often need to be posed and and told what to do. Um, we like to put people in beautiful situations and wait for beautiful things to happen with just a little bit of direction from us. So, like a fashion shoot. Absolutely, a lot of movement, um, a lot of attitude. Uh, we make <laughs> we we make them work. We make okay. them work, but we make them work to look good and have fun and, and have how, a good time. And how long then do you stay to the very last guest leaves, or? It depends a lot on the, if they're having a very special ending to the wedding, sparkler send off, there's many things that happen, but for, for the most part, it just is a continuous party at that point. And if we've done our job right, that last hour is just the same people dancing. So unless you have a special ending, I would say uh, you can cut your photographer loose unless you uh, feel comfortable having them through the game. Strictly their decision. We've talked about the engagements, we've talked about the wedding day, now it's after the fact. At the reception, I have seen many guests uploading to Facebook or with mm -hmm. Instagram, allowing social media mm -hmm. to take place actually during the event. Mm -hmm. So what about from a photographer's perspective, digital photography? We're not instantaneous, but what we do is when we put the photographs online within a week after the wedding, they should be professionally produced presented in such a way that the client is looking in to realize they've had a professional photographer at the way, <laughs> not a camera phone. <laughs> <laughs> My iPhone doesn't cut it, huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> and then also for the album, how long, Robin, do you believe it takes realistically for the album to be produced? For us, realistically, it's about a month for the album to be produced, and that is after we've received the requests and the, um, the selections from the bride and groom, and this is in addition to burning CDs. Okay. I'm sitting here listening to you both, and from the time the couple meets with you through the wedding itself 
and all of the editing that takes place afterwards, it seems like you put in a full 40-hour work week to produce a wedding. We always tell the client that with a professional photographer, you should have two to three hours of post and pre-production to every hour that we're on a job. Seven hours on a job is only 14 to 21 hours involved with the bride room until the time we deliver a final product. You are buying a professional service, not a commodity. That is a great statement. Mm -hmm. Thank you both for sharing your expertise in photography. Thank and you thank you, you for joining us with Wedding 411 On Demand Podcasts. Thank you.